Hi, this is Levi Sim from PhotoFocus.com. I am joined today by my pal, Vanelli. <laughs> there he is. And today we are excited to bring to you this Q&A session sponsored by Perfectly Clear Complete. We'd like to show you how to utilize Perfectly Clear Complete to make your pictures look the best they can be. And we are ready to take your live questions as well and address them directly. Um, which means you've probably got some stumpers for us that we won't be able to answer, which is great, because if we can't answer it right now, we will find you the answer um, as quickly as possible. And Vanelli, I'm glad you're here with me. Hey, Levi, I'm glad Welcome to be here. Welcome to the show. Good. Well, thanks, Good. What, what are you up to lately, Vanelli? Well, we, we you and I rehearsed a little bit yesterday, and I love, I love the fact that we could collaborate. I mean, you're in where, Utah? Where are you? I'm in Oregon. I've been in Oregon, Oregon. for almost Why five years. Why does say Utah? Because <laughs> I, I lived there like for three years, five years ago. <laughs> <laughs> there, there, there's an old um, movie Sheesh. called Elizabeth Town, and that's what they kept saying. They lived in in California for one month, and then right. the side of the family kept saying so and so from California. Um, anyways, but it was neat last night because we were able to collaborate on some cool ideas that we're going to share today. So that's awesome. Excellent. Excellent. Well, and I'm, I'm glad we've got this time to, to get together here. And uh, we're glad that you guys are joining us. Like uh, Jarek Wasil Wasilewski from, from Poland. Welcome to the show. Wow. Jarek, um, I just totally slaughtered your name, but thank you for letting me do so. Um, the, one, one of the great things today, because we're sponsored by Athentech, the makers of Perfectly Clear Complete, they are offering a couple of complimentary licenses for Perfectly Clear Complete. And so all you have to do to enter the drawing for those prizes is leave a comment, just like Jarek did, saying hello. and or, or leave a question, or just type a period, and that'll do it. That'll enter you in the drawing for the complimentary licenses of Perfectly Clear Complete which we are getting ready to show you how to use. And uh, that's, that's a simple way to enter our drawing. And we'd love to hear from you. If you've been using it and have some questions, we're ready to help with that. And otherwise, Vanelli and I are going to start showing you some things. Where should we start, V? Um, you, just, you know what? A lot of people are excited about your landscapes. Oh, sure. Sure. I've got one queued up and ready to go. OK. A screen. Can you see it there, V? Yes. Excellent. OK, so um, I'm launching from Photoshop right now. I'm going to close this little group. And like, I, I make a living as a portraitist, but I love making landscape pictures, too. It's, it's one of my favorite things. I, I made this last Friday morning. Um, I was out looking for wildlife, and I didn't find the wildlife I was after. And when I look at this picture, I realize why I didn't find the wildlife I was after, because this is where I was looking. And you can't see anything. It's just this incredibly dense forest out here in the coastal range. Um, but I like this picture a lot, and I haven't had a chance to uh, refine it in Perfectly Clear yet. So I'd like to show you what I would do to help it look its best using Perfectly Clear. And uh, the first thing I'm going to do in Photoshop is, is make this into a smart object, because making a smart object in Photoshop allows us to re-edit things in point. Um, so when I run, when I run now the, um, the Perfectly Clear complete as a filter, if I want to go back later and change it, I can just click on the, the filter button again, and it will show me like my original settings in Perfectly Clear, and I can make adjustments from there. I don't have to start over from scratch. Whereas when I use Lightroom, which is what I usually do for my portraiture, um, in Lightroom, once I press Save, it is all baked in, and there's nothing I can do to change it. I would have to launch the picture again from my original RAW file. So this is a big advantage we have using Photoshop for Perfectly Clear. And I'm just going to zoom in a touch. 
perfectly clear is working on a lower resolution preview of my photo. So if I want to see it nice and crisp, I often just have to zoom in a little bit. And you can use the slider up here, or you can press Command Plus to zoom in, Control or Command Plus to zoom in. Now, I've just hit my preset that says zero. And all I did was, was set all the, all the sliders, I turned them all off, and then saved it as a preset so that, um, so that I, can, I can start from totally, totally from scratch. Otherwise, when I launch Perfectly Clear Complete, it starts with uh, one of the presets that comes with Perfectly Clear, which, which are good presets. I just want to start here from totally fresh. Now, the pre-processing, I'm not going to use any of that. I don't think I need uh, to adjust my, to, to rescue my exposure. I don't need to, um, you know, I, I could, I could potentially warm it up a little bit, like, like put a little bit of an orange filter on here to warm this picture over. But if I do, I end up losing some of those greens and blues that are in there. So I'm going to, I'm going to hold off on that, but I know that it's an option for me. This picture is very cool overall right now, so we may come back to that one. But let's start down here. If I just turn on exposure and hit the low button, it's going to brighten things up for me automatically. And it's doing it, you know, trying to make it kind of like, like my camera does to a, a certain brightness overall. Um, the thing is, this picture is supposed to be dark. Like, it, it's dark green and blue trees, and they should be dark. So I don't want it to go too much, but I do like the, the punch that I get by adding that little bit of brightness. Uh, so I will have it just turned on a little bit. And then anytime I make an exposure adjustment, I always make a depth adjustment. And the depth is kind of like the contrast and it brings back in some of the, the darker tones that I may otherwise have over brightened. Um, and, and using the depth control helps me bring those back. And there's two options for it. There's the high contrast or high definition. And I don't have a solution for which one works best. I always just switch between the two and see which one I like better. In this case, I think I like the high definition better. And we can see our before and after using this little slider in the bottom left corner. And you can see that we've just added a lot of punch. There's my original picture on the left side and what we've done so far here on the right. And I like where that's going. It has just got more punch and pizzazz to it. Like the contrast looks really, really good now. Um, you can also see the before and after by clicking on the photograph or by pressing space bar. And that'll show you before and after as well. And so my, my fingers just kind of live on the, the uh, before and after button and the space bar so I can constantly see um, what I've done. And I like that very well. I might check this light diffusion button just to see if I like it. I think it kind of it kind of softens the transition between highlights and shadows. And in this case, I don't think it's going to have much effect because I don't have really strong highlights and shadows. Although it is doing something interesting there that I've not experienced with it before. Huh. Giving us a little, yeah, it's, it's kind of muting some of the contrast. So I'm gonna turn it off for this one. Um, now we'll come down into the color area. And I love, I love this, this fidelity button, especially when I'm working with landscapes because it brings back a more true color range in my greens and blues. And, and it, 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 it kind of warms up some of the greens and gives them just a, a much more natural look. When I turn this off, you can see that all the greens here are kind of homogenous. But when I turn on the fidelity, it brings back some of the yellow and brown into the picture. And I really like the way that that works. So I highly recommend using this fidelity button. And perfectly clear, excuse me, Athentech has just launched a new version of Perfectly Clear called Essentials. And it includes the exposure section and the tone and the color and the details. And it doesn't have these other tools down here for eyes and face and skin um, and makeup. And so 
you're not like if, if you don't ever photograph people this new perfectly clear essentials is a great idea for you to get these wonderful color controls and and contrast controls without spending extra money on the portrait tools that you just don't use so i i, I recommend you check that out um, also some of the things that perfectly clear does that no other application does for instance, it as as we brighten the photograph, like if I crank this brightness way up, the interesting thing is that it never uh, reduces the saturation of the photograph of the colors, even though I've cranked the the brightness over the top. Whereas with uh, Lightroom or Photoshop, if you add brightness, you're basically adding white to the photo, and it reduces the intensity of all the colors in your picture. And that's a patented thing from Perfectly Clear, and I love it. I think it's so good. Also, it'll never blow out highlights. So even though I cranked that brightness far too high, it didn't overbrighten the tree trunks down here. Uh, I mean, everything else looks pretty terrible right now, but uh, it, it'll never blow out highlights, like on a waterfall or clouds or a bride's dress. And I think that's a really cool tool for um, managing the the brightness and colors in your picture um okay so fidelity looking good here's before and after i like that let's check out the tint correction and i suspect it's going to warm things up a little bit yeah it's it's adding a bit of of orange and pink to counteract all the blue in this photograph i may not want it though i may i may want to maintain that that blueness, the coolness. I mean, it's the early morning. The sun is not shining directly down on here, so it is the blue sky lighting things up. And I mean, there's a ton of blue trees in this picture, and I don't want to lose those. So I think I'm going to leave off the tint correction. Now let's check out what happens with the sky enhance. Um, it's called sky enhance, but it's just going to work on blue colors in my picture. And if I crank it up, I can see what it's going to do. Obviously, that's too high. So I'll pull it back. And I might like what it does. Now, I can choose different colors of blue that it will uh, kind of enhance the colors to. And uh, the royal is where the default is, but cerulean is a little bit more gentle, a little more green to it. Let's try aquamarine here. We've also got foliage enhancement for the greens and browns, so we're gonna work on those in a second. Um, night enhance, like even though these are called night enhance, it doesn't mean I can't use it anytime I want to. Um, you can use all of these tools to affect your pictures in various ways. And I think I'm gonna go back up to that cerulean and check it out one more time with a lot less intensity. Yeah, and I'm, I'm just unchecking the box next to Sky Enhance to see before and after of only that effect. I, I think I like it. I'm going to leave it turned on. And then let's go to Foliage Enhance. And it's set to maximum green, but let's try forest green because I'm in a forest. And we'll crank it up so we can see the effect. And then we'll dial it back. You know, that's a bit yellow. What about evergreen? I'm in an evergreen forest. Let's try that one. That's looking better. And then I'll dial it back down to something much more subtle. And then I'll turn it off and turn it back on. I don't know, can you even see the effect V? I can see some subtlety of the, of the green changing in there, but it's, it's a small change. Um, and then we've also got the uh, enhancements for the red tones. And it starts out on mahogany. I'm gonna switch it to burnt sienna and we'll crank it up there and see what it does. Uh, with the, if I use the right setting here, I think I could turn the pine cones on the trees into little fireballs, which of course I don't wanna do, but um, you might just like what this does for some of the warmer tones in the picture. I'm not really seeing much effect, but again, it's a largely green picture, not, not a red and brown picture. I like where, I, I like where this is going here, Vanelli. This is uh, looking pretty good and punchy. Now, 
We've also got sharpening down here. And the sharpening tool in Perfectly Clear is exceptionally good. I'm going to zoom in close. Go to 100% like that. That's a little more than 100%. Let's try there. And I'm going to I'm going to dial that back just a little on the sharpening. I'm not a big sharpener. I I often do no particular sharpening, leaving the default settings in Lightroom. And so for me, even using this tool is is stretching myself. But whenever I do, I like what it does. I just always forget to do it. I think that little setting right there is looking pretty nice. It's bringing out some of the detail in the cones on these closer trees, and I like that. Um, it says noise has been detected, and I'll give it a chance, but I don't feel like I'm seeing a lot of noise, and so I'm not too concerned about it. And I'm going to dial this way down in strength. Give it a second to render there. My computer is both broadcasting and um, doing these effects on extremely high resolution photographs. And so it takes just a moment longer to compute than usual. You know, I'm going to turn off the noise. I don't think it's working the way I'd like it to. But I sure do like the way that the noise works for um, nightscapes and, and honestly high ISO pictures. Um, Okay, this is looking good. I think I like where I am, V. I'm going to go back up and check out that. <laughs> you, you get <laughs> so excited about your landscaping trees. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, if you had trees, you would be excited about them, too. You're right. All we have is palm trees. <laughs> palm trees and bushes. A lot yep. of bushes down there. <laughs> um, I'm going to check out this corrective filter a little bit again. I, I think I might. Oh, I might like a little orange, tiny little orange for and after. Yeah, OK, I like the orange. I'm going to leave it like this. I'm going to call it good. Now, are there any questions yes. regarding um, this? Let's see. Yeah, so uh, I'm trying to pronounce his name. And I'm so sorry. Is it Sh Shamir then? We'll call him S. Surrender? Yeah, that's it. Our buddy, yes. Is there? OK. Yes. Uh, so people were asking, um, should you use Lightroom before your Lightroom presets, before perfectly clear or after perfectly clear? Now, me personally, but when we did the Assassin stuff, that's when, in fact, can I pull up the Assassin? Am I yeah, share for my sure. Screen? Let me save Should my I'm picture. Sure? And, and let me just show real quick, V, that when I save oh. my picture, Sorry, it comes it. right back to Photoshop, yeah, I, and um, and there's my perfectly clear complete filter. And if I if I double click on that, it's going to open perfectly clear again with my picture uh, loaded with the same settings. And I can turn that on and off and see my um, the the effects exactly as as they were, which is really cool. So turning it over Thank to you, V. Where's my right, screen? Right. I'm going to share my screen. And there. All right. All right. Do you see the assassin? I see the assassin. Great. All right. So now with the assassin, um, and this, I also do this with a sport um, grit look. And our buddy Tim, who does a lot of sport portraits, is in with us today, too. Before perfectly clear. So I call it B. PCC before perfectly clear complete. <laughs> um, right. What I used to do is I would go in and make all my Lightroom changes here and then run my presets on this particular image. Uh, let's see if I have one right here for you. So here, here's a picture of Kitty. Say, where's my assassin? So here's the female assassin look. It looks, it looks really good, but there's a lot of little things. I don't like how it's blowing out. There's a lot of little things I want to fix on it, OK? So what I would do first is run it through perfectly clear, then run my preset over here. Yeah, because perfectly clear will shift you and I in and out. Say again? 
it'll it'll touch up your skin and everything and and remove exactly. blemishes and remove so, the circles under the eyes so last night levi and i had a little brainstorming session and it uh -huh. started out because we were doing batch processing right and, and it kind of spun off and do this whole new area so here we are with the assassin in the past i would come in to either perfectly clear or photoshop run perfectly clear then go back into Lightroom, make my changes with the assassin look, then come back into Photoshop to get rid of stuff like this or fix the background. So it was a lot of back and forth, back and forth. All right. So with this here, let's see, here's a complete assassin look. I made a quick action. Let me just run it to show you what it's going to do. So for the complete action, what it's doing is it's running perfectly clear. Then it's going to run my camera raw preset. Boom. Yeah. I'm done. Awesome. And you're still in Photoshop. You haven't had to go back. Exactly. And forth. So here's the problem I have, like right here, let's say. So if I double click, so let, let's look at what the action did first of all. So what the action did is it converted because these are things I always do. I always make my um, layer a smart object. So in the action, first thing I did, created a smart object. Then I ran perfectly clear complete, and here I wrote a preset for the assassin look, and I'll show you that in a moment. After it went perfectly clear, then it ran the camera raw file or the camera raw filter, and now here we are back into what we have. So instead of running back and forth, back and forth, I'm inside uh, Lightroom, or I'm sorry, inside Photoshop. Now I'm going to double click. And let's get rid of this little light stand. So I, I shot the C stand with it. So I'm gonna make a selection. Shift backspace is gonna bring up my content aware fill and select OK. Deselect it, now it's gone. Once I save it here, it's gonna take a little couple of seconds because it's running that preset again that we already created. Right. So now I'm done. When we go back, boom, it's gone. Now, if you notice, I got sloppy and actually Kitty, uh, we, did, we did an entire shooting day. At the very end of the day, she said, oh yeah, we were supposed to do the assassin in the chair. So <laughs> I quickly reset this up. Now, I got sloppy. If you notice back here, there's garbage, so to speak. You know, um, the black backdrop didn't cover everything. This fix, let's do this. Um, I don't like, to make this a perfect image, I don't like how her head is too close to the edge. So maybe if I bring it up just a touch. Right. Yep. Now I'm going to fill that with black up in here. But I don't want to fill it with com just complete black because... This here isn't true black. So what right. I can do is come over and select the eyedropper tool and hmm. just select what colors this should be. Create a new layer. And boom, and I just filled it. What'd you, what'd you so do to fill that, that layer, B? I don't know how to. Oh, I'm sorry. Trick. So Alt Backspace. Not really. So I just filled it with the foreground layer. Now, what I can do is just go to Edit, Fill, and then fill with the foreground color, that'll be black. Oh, cool. Or okay. the color I selected up here. Now, I'm going to go back to the top layer. And I'm going to click my gradient tool. And I'm going to fade from black to transparent. Because over here, you may not notice it as much, but I got sloppy. And I didn't shoot the way I should have. You know, normally, you should be on a perfect black backdrop. And then there's no editing involved. But this is what you do in, just in case... Um, you have things you have to fix inside the image. We already have the image looking great. Now these are just extra add-ons. So I'm going to drag in like so. I'm not really worried about what I'm doing, you know, messing with her, because I, all I care about is these areas here. Now that I just grabbed and put the transparent or the, the gradient fills in, I'm going to apply a layer mask. Now if I press and hold down the Alt key, as I select on the layer mask, what that's going to do for me is it's going to 
hide what we just did. Now I'm gonna grab a white paintbrush, and I, the only thing I'm gonna do is just paint back at 100% the areas that I, I want affected. Right. There we are. Done. And there we have it. So you, you see how, let's see, so I got that set and I could just save it. And once I save it, if I close out of it, it brings me back into Lightroom and here I have my, my image. So from, from a simple shot that we did here, we use perfectly clear to make sure we enhance the eyes, the skin, um, correct the overall tint of the image itself, and then it applied my, my Lightroom preset inside Photoshop. And all of that was done right. with an action. So let me show you one thing with that. So if I come back to the action palette, in fact, let's do this. I'm gonna edit this back into, perfect, into Photoshop. Now, let's see what happens. I just did. I'm gonna to toggle the state of the dialog box. So now when I hit run, it's gonna show you exactly what, we, what I did. Boom, so I came into perfectly clear. I already created a preset called Assassin Woman, and here it is. And that's touching up skin and things. Exactly, so the settings are over here. So you see what the settings are? Now to make, because we're already sharpening, Perfectly Clear does an amazing job on sharpening. Sometimes it's too good of a job because when I try to resharpen again in Lightroom, now it looks fake. So I'd like to do my sharpening inside Perfectly Clear, but if I'm doing a special effect like the Assassin or the sports look, then I'll do my sharpening outside of Perfectly Clear because I want it to look fake and not real. So Perfectly Clear sharpening actually makes it look real. You know, it looks like a good, consistent. Well, sometimes I don't want that. So here's before and after. So all I did was I got my look the way I want it. Then I came down here and I created my own preset. Right. And I just put it under Vanelli, and I just gave it a, a descriptive name, and that's how I have it over here as woman. Now I apply it, and then once it applies, now we go to Filter, Camera Raw, and here's that Camera Raw preset that I brought in from Lightroom. So yeah, because Lightroom here, presets are the same as Camera Raw presets. Exactly. And that was something you and I worked on yesterday, which I, which I thought was really cool. Um, <clears throat> it worked out great, which I didn't realize I can do that. So I just brought in, and we'll, we'll all do that in a couple minutes. We'll show that part. But from here, here's the, vanilla, here's the, the assassin woman. Look here. And I hit OK. And now we're done. So let me uncheck that again so I don't do it all over again. So that's how, that's why actions are so powerful inside um, Photoshop, but you can run perfectly clear with those actions. Let me stop sharing there. So, you, so that's what I thought was really cool is that you could also create an action using what you normally do, but then you apply perfectly clear inside that action. Right. Yeah, I love it. How's that? That's good. That's really good. Uh, I've got a street picture queued up for Alan. Alan, Alan's asking about street photography. I don't know if it's gritty, Alan. I don't know if I'm a gritty kind of street photographer. Um, that's not that's not street photography. That's Doug. We'll come back to Doug in a second. I've got that one. I've got I've got this one. I think let's do. Let's do this one. And so again, I'm gonna make it a smart object again, just by right clicking on the layer and choosing convert to smart object. And then um, it'll open up 
for me. Oh, and then and then I go layer. And I'm not showing my screen, am I, V? Um, let's see. Now I'm sharing my screen. Yeah, you didn't share your screen yet. There, there you are. Now you are. Okay. All right. So now I've converted to a smart object. Now let's go filter. Uh, Authentic imaging, perfectly clear, complete. And, uh, and, and yeah, Sarah yes, run perfectly clear, and then run your Visco presets or, or whatever. That's, that's definitely the better way to do it. I don't know why this launched. Oh, it says there's an update. That's because I <laughs> work with perfectly clear right now. And so what am I going to do here? I'm going to start... I'm going to start with one of the presets. Let's start with like intelligent auto and see what it says. Okay, it's brightening up a bit. Now, one of the cool things here is that we've got face aware exposure adjustment. If I turn that off, it's not paying, like when I turn it on rather, <clears throat> it's paying attention to the faces in the picture and I can come down here and I'll see that the, uh, it recognizes this guy up front with his sunglasses on as being a face. And so it's looking at that face and saying, okay, this picture, considering that this, this is a face right up front, it needs to be brighter to this amount. And I think that is so cool that it recognizes the face and makes adjustments for the brightness, paying sensitive attention to that face. Now, I think, I think maybe it's a little too strong anyway. I want some more grit in there, Alan, so I'm going to just darken it down a little bit. Um, and then with my depth, let's let's toggle between high contrast and high def and see what the difference is. Okay, so in this case, yeah, the high contrast looks blacker and crisper, and I think I like it. I'm gonna I'm gonna make it crunchier, kind of darker darks. Um, and if I turn on my clipping warnings, I can see that I've clipped quite a lot of that picture, but but you'll see that I don't have any highlights clipped. Only the blacks are clipped, and I think that's cool. Um, we often like to clip the blacks in a high contrast kind of shot, but we rarely want to actually clip the highlights too. All right, I'm gonna leave on the skin depth and bias too. And the skin depth also has a um, desaturating effect on skin, something to be aware of. Let's see, color restore is turned on. I'm going to turn that off. Fidelity probably won't have much effect. Uh, it may be affecting that sign in the background, which is like the least thing that I want to do. I want to not enhance the background when I've got this James Bond dude. These guys were the, I, I think he's the groom, and they're on the way to the wedding. And uh, they're in a street car, like they rented a, a trolley to drive around Chicago. I made this picture at Out of Chicago a couple of years ago. Um, I'm going to turn off sharpening for now because I'd like to do it at the end, I think. Well, so what else am I going to do? I'm going to check out and let's, let's see what the, uh, the face tools are doing. It says eye enhance is working, but I suspect it, it may just be sharpening on his sunglasses, so I don't want to do much of that. Dark circles is turned on, but I don't think it's having an effect either because, oh yeah, there it is. If you look really closely, you can see it's, it's darkening, or excuse me, it's, it's brightening the bottom edge of his sunglasses, <laughs> which is really cool that it's doing that, but I don't want it to do that, so I'll turn that off. Let's come down to the skin and see if we can't uh, see what's happening with, with the touch-up on the skin. Okay, so it's perfectly smooth, is enabled, and I think it's too strong at that setting for men. This is this is smoothing out the finest details hey, in his I, skin. Yeah. Reshare re your screen. Oh, did I, did I get kicked out? Yeah. They can't see you. They can't. I think, I think that was old. Okay. Okay, well, let's see. Can you see me now? You can see my screen? Yep. Okay. See me. Well, now you see the guys, all right. Um, so the perfectly smooth is working on the really fine details in the skin. It's great for women's skin, for sure. 
Uh, but on men, I tone it down quite a lot. And then we can also choose whether it's going to be full body or face only. In this case, face only is fine because the rest of his body is covered in clothing. And I'm going to leave it on subtle. And then I'm also going to turn on the blemish removal. Now, this works on bigger uh, details of the skin, things like creases and wrinkles, zits, uh, even the, the shaving bumps on a, on a man's skin. Those can be affected by blemish removal. This guy has a great complexion. I'm going to turn both of those off and just see I need to turn them on. Well, I might turn the blemish back on. See this little, see this little action down here on his chin? It might touch that up a bit. No, it's not. I'm going to turn it off. Um, now, infrared removal is a really cool tool. And I should, I'll, I'll show you these again in a second on a, on a better portrait uh, because they are super powerful for portrait work. But this infrared removal removes the red tones that we often get in skin that is a result of people flushing, like their faces flush with, with extra heat. And our cameras are sensitive enough to pick that up as the color red. And uh, I'm going to turn that off. Or, and, and so we can use that to remove and mitigate the impact of that redness. Um, shine removal, let's see if it's actually making an effect. I don't think it is in this picture. It's not too shiny. I think I like where we are. And now I'm ready for some black and white work. Now there's some black and white uh, looks down here too. We've got these looks built in. And I might as well try one, like the black and white film stock. <laughs> Let's try burnt black and white. Ooh, not too bad. You just not too bad. What are you giggling about? B. You just took my next tutorial, but that's okay. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> well, I'll just stop there, and you can you can expound no, no, on that's it. Fine. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Alan, yeah, thanks. The uh, reflection of my hat in this guy's glasses is my signature. I like that. Yeah, that's pretty good. Um, so there we go, and then I'll hit apply. Sweet. And another cool thing about doing stuff in... Photoshop, of course, is that we can blend layers. So I could, I could simply reduce the opacity of that if I wanted to and have a, ha have a faded look coming through. Where's my faded look? Oh, I'm on the wrong layer. Silly Levi. There we go. I kind of like that. And I still get some of the impact of the... Uh, black and white that I'd made, but it's blending with the original color photo as well. All right, V, what All you right. got? All right, I'm going to take over the Lightroom. OK, so um, you're able to see my screen? We are. And real quick, V, before you go on, um, I want to remind folks that we are sponsored today by Perfectly Clear Complete from Athen Tech. And they've been so good as to offer two complimentary licenses for Perfectly Clear Complete to our watchers today. And so if you would like to be entered in that drawing, please simply leave us a comment in the chat uh, on the YouTube page. So if you're watching on photofocus.com, you need to click on the video button, or excuse me, on the YouTube button at the bottom right corner of the video and head over to YouTube. And then on the right-hand side, you'll see the chat window where you can leave us a uh, comment, you can say hello, you can leave a, a smiley face, uh, you can ask us a question. And that is how you enter yourself in the drawing, just like Alan did by saying, great image, thanks for that, you win. You, you automatically win for telling me my picture was good, Alan. Thank you very much. <laughs> just kidding. Um, <laughs> so please come and leave us a comment and enter the drawing and Vanelli, Take it away. Right. Show us what you got. All right. So here, here's my buddy, uh, Ricky. He, he's a model slash um, actor. We did the shot outside. This was the finished product I gave him. He loved it. He's been using it for his model comp cards. Everything is great. And then Perfectly Clear comes along. Right. <laughs> and you wonder, so everything we've been doing up to this point has been showing people how to go into Photoshop run perfectly clear and do all of our stuff. Well, you can still run it from inside um, Lightroom. So if I right, right mouse click, edit in, perfectly clear. 
Now, personally, I like to have it come back as a JPEG. So you can decide how you want the format to come back in. Mm. From here, I want it to come back as a JPEG. And I'm going to click Edit. And then it's going to fire up perfectly clear. Now, these were images I've already delivered to the client. After I used them for experiments to see what perfectly clear could do to them, I like them much better. So I'm going to resend Ricky all of these images again um, with some of the edits. So here it comes up. Now, uh, let me do this just to there. All right, so here we are with, with the image itself. Now, I created an outdoor color correction preset. Look at the before and after. Before and after. Yeah, that's nice. Good. Now, let's see what I did. Um, over on this side here, and uh, we, we came along. I, I, I ran, let's see, perfectly clear essentials. What I actually did in the beginning was I ran the intelligent auto just to see what that would do. Then I ran vivid. Okay, beautified, fixed. So I ran through these first just to see what it was doing. I, th I thought, oh, this looks really good. And then I spent a few seconds just fine-tuning it. And once I fine-tuned the images on this end, then I just saved it as my outdoor color correction. And then save. And it brings it back into Lightroom. All right? So... That's a real quick one-click wonder. Let me get the grid. So that, that's a real quick one-click wonder. So here's the before. Here's the after. All right. So I love that a lot. Now, here's another shot of Ricky. And this is the final outcome of what we're going to do with him. But all inside perfectly clear. So right mouse click. This is where I'm going to go back into Photoshop again. And once inside Photoshop <clears throat> is where we'll start that, that concept again. I want to make it a smart object. Here's it come. Oh, there he is. Oh, you know what? <laughs> Let me cancel out of this. There we go. All right, so here's Ricky. Oh, was I running it already? I did. Oh, yeah. I had it myself. I'm sorry about that. Yeah, let, let me start that over. There we go. All right. So here we go. So here's Ricky. We got him in inside Photoshop. One of the actions that I wrote, again, was rich black and white or a softer black and white. So the first step we want to do again is I want to convert this to a smart object, and then I'm going to run my perfectly clear. So let's see what we did here. So I converted to a smart object. Now perfectly clear is going to open up. And once it opens, let's get rid of this look for a moment. I applied that same preset that we talked about earlier. There's the outdoor color cast. So let me change it just so you can see the difference. Okay, so here's the outdoor color correction. Then I applied one of the looks, and this right here is built right in, the crisp look. is built right into uh, Perfectly Clear. It comes with it. So before and after. Yeah, that looks great. Applied. And here we have it. And once again, it's on a it's on a smart object. So like this right here was killing me. This background, mm, right, right. So only because it, your eye is, you're looking at him. Everything's looking great, and all of a sudden, boom! There's this white, you know, in the background. So I mean, what we could do is come over here to the levels again, and let's say dial it in. That's actually not going to do it for us. There we go. 
know. So let's just get rid of that. So instead, what I'd have to end up doing is copying, you know, just just going on to a, to a separate layer and then basically um, copying this area down here and bring it up into here just so that's hidden. All right. Right. Now, easiest way to do it for now, only because we we're doing a live webinar, is I could actually paint this in black. There you go. Good. And then just dial it back just a touch to make it look believable. Right about here. Actually, right there. And maybe add a filter, blur, uh, Gaussian blur. There we go. Just see it to match a bit. All right. So, again, nice. you know, and the, and the neat thing about all of this is you run through it. But look how fast it took me to get it to where I, I like it. I love the way it looks right here. Now I can take a little extra time to do what we just did here. Or I could take time, maybe add a vignette all the way around. All Excellent. Right? I love that. Hey, and, and Cecil said, great image, Vanelli. But the joke's on Cecil because <laughs> I'm in charge of sending out the prizes, Cecil. So you have to compliment my pictures, not Vanelli's. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> right, and, then, and then Cecil also asked, when going to Photoshop, should you use the export to Photoshop as a smart object? And that's, that's when you're coming from Lightroom. You can absolutely do that, Cecil, and that'll just save you the step of creating the smart object in Photoshop. So definitely, definitely do that. Um, and yeah, they need film emulation presets in perfectly clear. So here's something cool, Srimner. You can actually create your own looks for perfectly yes. clear. We'll have to, we, we better do that in, a, in another uh, article or webinar V. It's, it's not difficult, but it's beyond the scope of today's presentation it's for sure. Lots, right? Look up tables. Yeah, look up tables. All you, all you have to do is export your own look up tables as a cube file, and then you just drop them into perfectly clear, and it will enable those in there, and that is a great way to work. So, now, uh, I just realized that you buy. <laughs> what's that? Um, yesterday's whole purpose of our talk was to show people how to batch process inside Photoshop. Right. Right. Which you still didn't show them yet. <laughs> exactly. All right. But um, before but we got so excited doing some other things <laughs> last night um, that that we that that kind of took like a backseat. Because inside <laughs> Lightroom, it's real simple to batch process using using it. Right. Um, well, so I want you to cue that up, V. But while you do yep. that, I'm going to show you just simply how I use Perfectly Clear every day in my portrait work. Here's a picture of our buddy Doug, who was good enough to let me <laughs> use his picture for demonstrations. And I think I think you're going to like what this does. I'm I'm converting it to a smart object. And then I'm going to hit the filter. Hey, V, can you um, can you turn down my volume on your computer? You you need some headsets. Oh. I'm echoing over there. How's that? Um, that is that better? Yes, that sounds better. Yep. Thank you. I don't think I'm echoing anymore. All right, let's launch the perfectly clear complete. And what we're gonna? That's not what we're gonna do. We're gonna start with my zero preset, and. So everything is zeroed out here. Now we could choose one of my other presets that I've got, like um, Hub Man. And that gives me a starting place for, like I, I was working for this company and I had 90 people to retouch all at once. And so I created presets for the men and women at different levels of, of retouching. And I just came in here and was able to simply and quickly um, click those presets and get done with them. And I'll show you how to save a preset here in just a sec. So what we do first, I'm gonna check out the exposure. Let's turn that on. Let's turn on the face aware, and then let's hit low. Whoa, it thinks it needs to be a lot brighter. I'm gonna go that personally. Something down, down around, down around there is looking pretty good. Yeah, before, and after, 
And I love it. Look, it, it's brightening up the dark areas of his face, but it's not blowing out his beard and it's not blowing out his eyeball. I think that's cool. Let's turn on a little depth, see where that takes us. Let's try the high contrast this time. I think high contrast is the one I want. And then I can turn it up a little bit more on the brightness too, because I'm darkening some of those shadow areas. Okay, I like that. Looking good before and after. And then let's go down here to the face stuff. Let's just dive right in. And it, it found Doug's face just fine. I can click this show and adjust control points if I want to like refine the face selection. And I might try it. I might, I might skip this little dot over the center of his eye opening. And it goes over the center of the eye opening, not the center of the pupil necessarily. Because like if somebody's looking out the corner of their eye, you don't want to put it right over the pupil. You want it over the center of the eye opening because that's also mapping where things like dark circles are applied. Look at that. You see that before and after? And it is just touching up that dark area under his eyes. I'm going to crank it up a little more. I love the way this works. And then let's turn on a little eye enhancement. Not bad. Maybe a little bit more. I like to keep it pretty mellow with eye enhancement. That's looking good. Here's, here's without the eye enhancements and, and uh, dark circles. You know what I might do? I might scoot these back up where Perfectly Clear originally put them. And that's going to grab the, the darkest part of the circles a little bit better. And then I can tone that down a touch. If you go too high on dark circles, sometimes you get a, a little bit of a color cast in there. So I want to be aware of that. Um, now, let's see. We don't need teeth whitening. We're going to come back to the face contouring. I like to do that last. Let's turn on perfectly smooth. We'll keep it down low. And then let's turn on blemish removal. And let's crank it up and watch what happens. See all this, this detail in Doug's skin? Look at that. Without. And then with. It's just gone. But I'm going to turn off the perfectly smooth again. Otherwise, I'm, I might make him a little bit too baby-faced. And we definitely don't want that on a rough and rugged fellow like Doug. So let's tone that down a bit before. And after, that's looking pretty good. Um, infrared removal, let's check and, and see how that's affecting this picture with Doug. I think, I'm not sure I can see any effect in this photo. We don't have a lot of red in his skin, so I think it's all right without. Uh, let's try the shine removal though, and see how that tones down the brightness on his forehead. Look at that before and after. It just reduces the impact of that shine. Now, if I crank that up too high, it goes a little bit flat. Like it, it really touches up the shine. So you want to be aware of that and tone it down to just the right spot. But I, I rather like that. That is looking good. Now, up to this face contouring and watch what happens when I click this button. Peaks right here. Did you see that? We just took off a few pounds. <laughs> and it is working so slick. Works. And it's very, very subtle. Oops. It's very, very gentle. Um, and it doesn't distort the background. It doesn't, it, even if there are vertical lines in, in the backdrop, in the picture, like it, like it does if I take it to, uh, liquefy <clears throat> and then it's a slider too so we could crank it up if we really wanted to but we don't need to we can just leave it down here around 50 percent or so and offer a, a flattering picture with those 10 extra pounds off that everybody says yeah I'll, I'll come in for a shot um i'm just you know i'm losing 10 pounds i say man i can lose you 10 pounds between my posing and my processing that's no problem at all um and so one of the other things i love is that even though we've we've softened his skin quite a lot it hasn't reduced the sharpness of his beard in the least or his eyelashes or his eyebrows even though they overlap 
the skin that's being retouched. I think that's remarkable and, and really Sweet. a cool setup. So there's before and after on Doug. Let's see. What map, uh, Surimner's asking, what map do you put the LUTs in? Surimner, I, I think that's it, Surimner. Like, like I said, I'm not ready to do it. Oh, you found it, V? The 3D LUTs is the way to go for his question. Can you hear me, V? All right. All right. Um, uh, let me share my screen. Can you hear me, V? Yep. Oh, good. <laughs> Did, you're answering Surimner's question with the 3D LUTs. That's the right spot to, to put stuff. Oh. All right. Um, so before I get into the batch <laughs> processing, <Can> you... <laughs> this is my adorable little goddaughter. And again, this was before Perfectly Clear. Everything Levi is doing, which is really cool, is we're actually showing you the long way of doing it. So you can actually see what we're doing. Because we, we always get in trouble. Like we'll click through things really fast. And then we'll get in trouble and people, well, certain people will tell us, hey, slow down and show them exactly what you're doing. Um, so here is a perfect example. My, my goddaughter has these bags under her eyes constantly. All right, so let me get into Photoshop. So here we are in Photoshop. I'm going to run perfectly clear on this. And, be, and, and it takes on whatever we did last. So let me get that look off. And what I want to do is I'm going to come over here just to perfect eyes. Oh, what's this, Levi? Raccoon eyes. Oh, look. <laughs> now, I, the, the story behind the raccoon eyes, long story short, we were in London, and I'm eating with um, Rich Harrington and uh, Brad, the guy who's um, the president of Perfectly Clear, and I talked about raccoon eyes. And he looked at me kind of funny. Yeah, those dark and, shadows. And said, explain it. So I did, and two months later, they put it inside perfectly clear. I mean, how cool is that? That's cool. So that's why I love this company, because they listen to the photographers, and if there's things we need fixed, you know, it basically is like we're having um, developers working for us. You know, so it's, it's like we want something fixed in it, or we want something really cool. They pick our brain, and boom, it's into the next edition. But look how fast that was. Just a little simple click, go to perfect eyes, and all I'm messing with is just the bags underneath your eyes, apply, and now we're done. And awesome. Now that's great if you know I'm dealing with one image, but if I want to deal with the mass groups of images, that's where the batch processing comes in. So let me go back to Lightroom for a moment. So these were pictures we took in the Bahamas on the Vanelli and Friends uh, cruise that we did. Uh, this was that year Cadesi came with me. So here's three images. What I want to do with these is I want to apply perfectly clear. And I also want to add just a little extra punch to the image itself. So if I come over here to File, now since I already created an action, on that action call the Bahamas, it does everything we talked about before. It converted it to a smart object. It runs perfectly clear. And then my camera raw preset, it's going to show, it's going to apply that preset. Well, if I want to make it a batch process, click on automate, batch. And then from here, I'm going to select which action out of my perfectly clear actions here that I want. I'm going to choose a folder, which I have on my desktop. And then the destination folder, I just want it to go back into the same folder. Now, watch what's going to happen when I hit OK. I hit OK. It goes out, opens up the image, applies that action. But now it's going to ask me to save it. And I click Save. And then it goes on to the next image. Does the same thing. Ask me to save it. And then the third and final image, it'll do the same thing. 
All right, so when we're finished, let me get back to, my desktop. Good, so now when we're finished, it gave me three PSDs here. All right, well, that's great, but it's not really that much of a time saver because if I'm constantly. Well, we but, but if, you can also run it on 600 pictures all at once. Yeah, but yeah, yeah but that's what I'm saying. But so imagine if I ran it on um, 30 images. I don't want to sit here and constantly, you know, constantly hit save, save, save. So instead, let me go back to here. Let me open this up. So we have our image here. What I didn't add on this part here, and I can't add, in fact, you know what? Let's see if I could duplicate this. You know what? Um, yep, duplicate, good. All right, so I'm gonna duplicate that action so I don't mess with the original. What I need to do instead is I'm gonna start recording over again. Now I'm gonna file, open, and I'm going to search for that image that I have here, and it just happens to be here. Let's use this one. Um, I'll use that one. Open. Good. I'm going to stop. I'll move that to the top. There, there's the open. And now, when I'm done, let, let me do the recording again. File. Let's say save as. And I want to save it as a JPEG. I'm going to just give it a different name for a moment. Save. Good. And then close it out. Stop recording. So now I'm going to take this and move it to the bottom. And take I the gotcha. close so and move that to the bottom also. You just edited your edited your action so that it's exactly so. So, I, so to create the action was simple. You just create a new um, you know, create a new action here, and then just hit the record button and just start recording what you're doing. So now mm -hmm. you saw what I just did here. Now this time, um, let's do this real quick. I'm so sorry. Uh, but what I want to do real quick is delete the, the ones that we already put in. Otherwise, it's going to ask me to save it. So I'm on the desktop. Right. Where's my perfectly clear? There it is. Good. So I'm going to just delete the ones I just did here. And then that one I just created, which was this one. Yep. Delete that. So now I have my three original images again. There we go. Now file, if I do the automate batch processing, this time I'm going to select the copy, the Bahama copy. Now if I click on this, it's going to say, when this option's on, the files will be saved to the destination folder only by save as step in the action. If there's no save or save as steps, no files will be saved. Okay, so right now, um, I'm actually using the save as command. And I'm gonna save it as the extension. And I hit okay. Now what it should do is it opens up the file, runs my preset. Oh, it didn't do it. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Nothing like having this on oh, I know why. That's, I that's all right, V. I think I think we'll we'll figure it out. Yeah, but um, you know, can you, you know believe? What did, yeah, what I didn't need to do, real quick, is here's that batch processing. Is I don't need to check that. I don't think you do. Yeah. Yeah. Sure, so I don't I need to there. check it, and now it should be able to run it without me having to save it. Excellent. Yep. Save. Oh, you're killing me. <laughs> I think because you didn't do save as. Yeah, that's that what I think be. I did wrong. Yeah. yeah. So anyway. So basically, so I shouldn't have to. 
So if you do it correctly, that, that last step right here, and yeah, then that, that, that's a Photoshop that's thing. Right, right. Yeah, and then that's a Photoshop thing to where you, you can um, do the batch processing so you don't have to sit there and constantly save every single step. Yes, awesome. All right. Well, and can you believe our hour is already up? Holy cow. Very last chance, folks, if you want to enter the drawing for a complimentary copy of Perfectly Clear Complete, you can do that right now. This is the last chance uh, to enter. And so, Benelli, while I draw those names out of the hat, this hat, you should stop screen sharing there, V. Oh, I'm sorry. And I should, I should switch the camera view. You're good. Um, Benelli, where can we catch up with you when you're not doing perfectly clear webinars? Yep, uh, photofocus.com, of course. Uh, that's, that's where we do all of our writing, the majority of our writing through there. And um, I'm doing a Vanelli and Friends cruise September 8th. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a group of photographers and totally immerse them uh, in photography, uh, Photoshop, Lightroom workflow, and, of course, perfectly clear. So we'll be setting sail to the Bahamas September 8th. And then we're doing another one next year with Rick Salmon. Excellent. Excellent. That's really exciting. Um, and, and those are you. at vanilliandfriends.com. And what? And where can we find Levi? Oh, we can when, find when Levi. He, when he's not out shooting with Abe. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? I got to go out with uh, Abe Curlin this week. Uh, we, we found some some fun stuff to photograph. And so you can see some of my, some of my pictures on Instagram at photo Levi. And you can always find me on photofocus.com. I publish there several times each week. Um, also, and this is going to be a real adventure. Uh, if you are looking for a place to go to photograph the eclipse, I hope you'll come join me. We are going to the Nine Quarter Circle Ranch in Montana. And the eclipse is on Monday. So we're going to get up super early, drive to the right spot, and photograph that down near the Tetons. And then we've got the rest of the week to practice night sky photography, cowboy photography, portraiture, landscapes, wildlife. It is going to be just a great time. And I hope some of you will join me there. So head to ninequartercircle.com, N-I-N-E-Q-U-A-R-T-E-R, C R C I R C L E dot com, and then click on specialty weeks where you'll find photography weeks, or just give them a call at the ranch and uh, ask about the photography workshop. And I hope to see you there. It's going to be a blast for sure. Um, and and I promise you'll you'll learn some new techniques in photography for certain. Um, and I've got names for our winners, Vanelli. It looks like Srimner is our first winner. Srimner, are you still here? You just need to send me an email, Levi at photofocus.com, and I will send you the uh, download for Perfectly Clear Complete. And our second is Angie Karn. Angie, are you still here? Send me an email, Levi at photofocus.com, and I will send you to those prizes. Thanks a ton for joining me, Vanelli. Hey, thanks. It was a blast. You bet. Well, and, and don't forget, folks, of course, this is sponsored by Athentech and Perfectly Clear. So head over to athentech.com where you can download a free trial for 30 days. And you can also purchase Perfectly Clear Complete. Um, there's also the new Perfectly Clear Essentials if you don't need the portrait retouching tools. Uh, Surrender says he's already got it and he doesn't need it. That means my third choice can take it. Thanks, Surrender. Uh, and that's Tim Storm. Tim, are you still here? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> t t Tim actually got one from out of Chicago. Oh, he did. Oh, good. Well, then let's let's find another one. But we still um, have to Angie. send it to him. But Tim, yeah, are you still here? Well, then uh, Tim can send it to me too. Um, Angie, send me an email, Levi at photofocus.com, L-E-V-I. And the third choice picker coming up is Jarek. Jarek, are you still here? Love to send you the software. Oh, Tim is there. Oh, good. Excellent. 
Well, thank you all for tuning in. And thanks to Athentech for letting Vanelli and I come and show you our pictures and show you how we use Perfectly Clear to make them better than we could without it. Um, we will catch you guys next time. Thanks so much. <laughs>